Welcome to our first video of 2020. I hope you've had an awesome New Year's and happy holidays and are just slowly getting back to your day-to-day -day things. But today I want to use our first video to share some of the things I worked on last year. And often we share our work here, kind of like entrepreneurial freelance tips. But in the past year, I've made a lot of changes to my own personal life that I found really helpful. There's things I started doing and things I stopped doing. And I want to share them with you. I know a lot of you might be making New Year's resolutions right now. And uh, these are the things that I found actually made a big impact on my day-to-day -day life. Um, so I thought I would share them with you. And maybe you can let me know what are the New Year's resolutions or just changes you've made in the past year that have stuck with you. Um, and maybe share some of the techniques that have helped you do them. So ironically, since we're on YouTube here, one of the first things I stopped doing in the past year is almost completely stopped using social media. I started with deleting the Facebook app from my phone. Getting away from Facebook helped clear up a lot of my uh, sort of like mental time. I found often in the mornings I would do a quick scan of Facebook and come across some dumb posts somebody made that would just kind of like fill me with rage or really get into the back of my mind. And as I sat down to work, that was the thing that would always nag at me at the back of my mind. Even a lot of photography groups, I found the kind of complaining and nonsense bickering uh, really dragged me down. So deleting Facebook was the best thing I've done in the last while in terms of taking my own time back. I found over the past year, I've actually stopped using Instagram for myself. Now, I still have Instagram and Twitter on my phone because I need to use it for work. I think those are going to be staying there, but I really don't use it personally. I'm not really checking in day to day on it. And I found that change to be really helpful in my own life. I find a lot of people I know are slowly switching out of it or kind of like removing aspects of it from their life. Um, and I think it's an interesting change. Do you use social media still? Are you using it every single day? Is that your main go-to source? I'd love to hear about what your, your take on it is. So the next thing I started doing is I stopped drinking soda. This is water. For me, I used to drink soda all the time. As a kid, I would have a can of Pepsi or Coke every single day with lunch. As I grew up, I would grab one easily, um, a full 500 milliliter uh, soda bottle in the day, sometimes several cans. I basically just loved soda. And uh, to be honest, I still really love soda. But I watched a video where it really broke down just how much sugar and other crap is in there to the point where, um, from what I understand, your body wouldn't actually be able to process the sugar. It you would literally throw up. Um, but they put chemicals in it to make it easily digestible. And, you know, reading more about soda and watching it, it is, was one of the worst things I was consuming on a regular basis. I eat fairly healthy uh, or fairly nutritiously overall, but soda was this like terrible go-to habit. So I stopped drinking soda kind of like January 1st of 2019 and I haven't really had it ever since. For me, it hasn't been a big physical change like some people have told me who've stopped drinking soda that they feel like more energized and more awake. And while maybe I feel a bit more of that throughout the year, I would almost attribute it to some of the other activities uh, I've began doing. But it really feels good to be able to kind of like shake off that sugar addiction. Um, and now if, if I try a sweet drink, it's like super, super sweet. That would, I would say is the biggest difference. And I have stopped kind of craving soda. Like when I see it, it's almost a little more off-putting than uh, desirable. Although I will say when it's a hot day and you see that coke with the uh, beating condensation on top of it, you really want one. So I'm gonna keep at it. Uh, I think this is kind of more of a permanent change where I try to eliminate just like really, really terrible foods. You know, I'll still eat candy once in a while, I eat chocolate, so I'm not like, no sugar. But I think that like huge hit of sugar that soda delivers is really not good for you and should be avoided. So I'm really happy that I was able to stick with this um, change in my life. This next one kind of goes hand in hand. Um, I would say throughout 2018, I was just generally feeling a lot more worn out. Our schedule was kind of crazy in 2018 and we managed our time a lot better in 2019. But one of the things I really wanted to do for a long time and have sort of started and stopped was uh, incorporate like very, very consistent exercise into my everyday life. 
So I'm not someone who likes going to the gym or you know, even particularly participating in like team sports, although I like that more. Um, the way I get exercise is through jogging. I started working my way up, you know, I was kind of hitting like two and a half kilometers, then slowly made it to three. Now I can do 15 kilometers at sort of the high end and an average run is probably closer to eight, nine kilometers. Running has really kind of like changed my life for the better. Um, often I'll do it in the middle of the day, so I'll take a little break from work and I'll go for a run. One of the books I read in the past year was Atomic Habits. I watched a really awesome video on Veritasium uh, that kind of like reviews the book and combines it with how to build your New Year's resolutions. So I'm going to link to it. I really recommend you watch that as well. But that's how I built up my running habit. So if you want to learn more about that, comment below and I'll make a video all about kind of like how I got into running, how I worked my way up, and how I just like built a consistent habit of running. Another goal of now, like another thing I want to do more of, and that's listen to more audiobooks. A lot of these are kind of related as you can see. So I stopped using social media, right? And part of that was getting a lot of my news um, and articles and kind of like new knowledge from stuff people post on social media. And over time, I've come around to believing that's not really the best place to get news, especially like deeper knowledge about topics. And for me, the best place, and I think for most people, is books. Um, so I really want to listen to more audiobooks. And the main time I listen to audiobooks is while running. So you can see how developing a habit of running has now created a good habit of reading a lot more. So I think I got through about 14, 15 books, audiobooks roughly this year on all sorts of different topics, fiction, nonfiction, business books, um, kind of like sociology books. If you're interested in that, uh, drop me a comment in the link below and I'll, uh, I'll hook you up with my list of some of my favorite books that I've read. I found audiobooks to be great and my retention to be completely the same with them. Um, I think it depends, you know, if you're listening to audiobooks while you're doing some other tasks, it might not be as helpful, but with running, you can really focus in on the book um, and really absorb it. And it makes me actually look forward to my runs as well. So I can kind of like, you know, I want to know what happens in the book or I want to learn more about a new topic. So I go for a run and that's sort of called like habit coupling, I guess. Uh, one of the things they talk about in the Atomic Habits book. It's been great for me and I, I would urge you to read more as well. If you're not a reader, try audiobooks. You know, one of the new books I've just finished reading is Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers. So if you like uh, kind of highly produced podcasts but haven't really been able to get into audiobooks, maybe pick up that book. It's a full audiobook made like a well-produced podcast. So they have interviews, music, sound effects. It's a really great book uh, covering a lot of uh, topics that I think are very important in our kind of like society today and really giving a fresh perspective on them. So check out Malcolm Gladwell's Talking Strangers if you're also looking to get into listening to more books um, and specifically looking to get started in audiobooks. So finally, the last thing that really made a difference in my life um, is cooking more. I don't like cooking, I'll be honest. Um, I've never really liked to do it. For a long time, I felt like it was a bit of a waste of time. And I can't say that I don't feel that way anymore. It's still very time consuming, but you know, with the sort of my other goals, like drinking less soda, exercising more, um, and especially with running, it sort of started to become, as I run longer and longer distances, I need to eat now, like my diet becomes more of a factor in that. One of the things that actually got me cooking a lot more was the YouTube channel Bon Appetit. And I love the kind of food science aspect they take with it. It really gave me some basic understanding of like, the principles behind cooking and how to make sense of it in my own mind rather than following simply following recipes or just kind of throwing stuff together. Through watching Bon Appetit and especially the longer kind of more ex explainy videos, I've come to understand kind of like why certain things go together, why certain cooking methods are preferred for certain meals, and I've slowly started to cook more. Now, I'm not like cooking gourmet meals every day or anything like that, but I started with my favorite foods kind of, and looking at kind of like different ways to make your favorite foods, you know? 
Similarly, if you like certain unhealthy foods, often when you cook them at home yourself, they're actually a lot more nutritious for you. Generally, I don't know, I don't have a lot of good advice about how to cook more. Um, I think you have to come, kind of come at it on your own. But there were certain specific things that once I started doing made me enjoy cooking more. So if cooking is something you're interested in improving or doing more of in the 2020s, um, let me know, drop me a comment below, and maybe I'll make a video about those kind of factors that put these positive pressures on cooking and made me start cooking more. Those are the items that I've started doing the past year, started and stopped. So stop using social media, stop drinking soda, exercise regularly, listen to more audiobooks and cook more. Um, and all those things together, while anyone hasn't made a huge impact on its own, all of them together have like really led me to have a more balanced 2019. So if that's something that's missing from your day-to-day uh, -day life, I really recommend uh, kind of implementing some of these changes or trying some of these changes or other changes. You know, if you have another bad habit that you feel like really wears on you, then maybe that's the thing to go after first. Um, but I really highly recommend you read the book Atomic Habits because it gives you like a very practical framework for making changes in your life, whether it's uh, kind of stopping to do something or starting to do something. So once again, I'm gonna do a review of that book uh, in the next few weeks. So make sure you hit subscribe. I'm gonna really, really try to make it my goal to make a video every week. I've tried this before with kind of like questionable success. Uh, you know, I've done like several months in a row and then fell off, but I'm trying to work on being a little less serious, like this video I shot on my phone uh, without much scripting. And I really wanna to talk to you more and kind of talk more about sort of like philosophy of working and living your day-to-day -day life that I apply to my own life um, and that I believe kind of leads to a lot of the successes that I've had in my work and personal life. So if you're interested in that and you're interested in improving in 2020, you know, growing a creative business and really just living a more fulfilling day-to-day -day life, uh, hit up our channel, hit subscribe, give me a thumbs up on that like button below. And, you know, let's spend 2020 uh, making each other and our world a better place. Thanks a lot for your time. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions about how I started or stopped doing any of the things I did in 2019, let me know in the comments below. My name is Eugene from Work Be Supply. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.